right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I am super excited for having a great speaker for today, Robbie Samuels. So Robbie will discuss low-tech solutions to design inclusive and engaging Zoom events. But before Robbie shares with us this topic, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking sessions during our Q&As and Gratitude Circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. We also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and search Entrepreneurs International Network to get access to a lot of other pieces of information, which I will also link down below so you can uh, check it later. And then if you go to our official website, it's eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek at our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for an hour and a half and we'll have our speaker give his talk for a Q&A portion for an hour. And after that, we'll give 15 minutes for our audience for you guys to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 10.30 uh, a.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker for today, Robbie Samuels. So Robbie Samuels is an event design consultant an executive Zoom producer recognized as a network e networking expert by NPR, HBR, and Forbes is an expert in virtual event design by JDC Events. He is the award-winning author of Break Out of Boredom, low-tech solutions for highly engaging Zoom events. And so I'm more than privileged to have Robbie on our stage to share with us his engaging talk and how we can benefit from this in our business. Robbie, take it away. Hey everyone. So let's you know think back to March 2020, a moment ago, we were just talking about that moment when suddenly on the horizon, all of the events that we thought we were going to be speaking at, attending, networking at, hosting, suddenly we're not going to be just events anymore. They had to now figure out how to make them virtual events. And in our recent memory, what, you know, what, what is a virtual event? I mean, it's a webinar, right? And a webinar is like 45 minutes of death by a PowerPoint followed by ineffectual Q and A and no one moderating chat, which <laughs> is not a great format and never really was a great format. And we weren't expecting a lot from virtual events back then in the like 2019 and before times, it was just another way to get information. Like you might listen in on a podcast, you might listen on a webinar. You know, webinar also indicates to a lot of people good opportunity to multitask, much like a podcast. Oh, I'll listen in on this pot this podcast, or I'll listen to this webinar while I walk my dog or do the dishes. <laughs> well, suddenly we needed to find a different way to engage with people. We needed to actually create connection in an online space. And so of course, Zoom became probably the the most popular, became the verb, at least for this this uh this new world. And prior to the pandemic, I had spent over a decade teaching people how to network at conferences. And I was teaching conference organizers how to design more engaging, inclusive, and transformative events with a focus on helping participants actually connect with each other so they leave having met their people. And so I was just as stumped as everyone else in March 2020, trying to figure out how do I take the skills I have and translate it to this new world and show really in the end, I had to figure out a new way to show up and offer value. And the result is that I have figured out how to do that. What I'm going to share today are some so high level ideas and a few very specific things you can do, like even on the call that will change how you show up, whether as a participant or host or a speaker on a Zoom call. So I want to actually share a little bit of a story with you about this experience because, you know, I started getting hired by companies. Like, actually, the first thing that happened was I hosted my very first virtual happy hour on March 13th, 2020. Um, the day before I wrote an article 
uh, called Nine Ways to Network in a Pandemic. And I shared that widely as blog posts, et cetera. And it got pretty good traction because it was very timely. And so I looked at that list and number three was host a virtual happy hour, which I had never done. I'd hosted lots of group calls for like group coaching. I had done plenty of one-on-one. I've been hosting a podcast since 2015, 2016. So plenty of one-on-one, which is why I have the, the fancy microphone. But now I'm being asked to come up with these like designs, these, these much more involved. So I started with virtual virtual happy hour that became a weekly event and it's now still a monthly event and I'll I'm going to share all the links at the very end so you don't have to be constantly grabbing uh, your attention into chat so don't worry I will make sure anything I mention I've got packaged up for you or I will share with you as a link at the very end now fast forward to a year and a half ago I got invited to support a one day virtual event for over 500 participants with a focus on anti-racism. And a big feature of this event is that they have what they call race dialogue. So in the morning, they have sort of a more typical, uh, I'd say conference. Um, they do a lot of really thoughtful things about moment of silence. Um, they, you know, they honor and acknowledge the land that they're on. Uh, they have some speakers come in. In the afternoon though, participants get to choose one of several Zoom links, not Zoom breakout rooms, but separate Zoom links to go to based on how they answer the question on the census around race and ethnicity. And so, you know, here we are like, five, almost 600 people, half of them are going to go into the room for people who identify as white. That's the room I end up going into because I need to manage smaller breakout rooms because you can't have a conversation with 300 people in a main room. Um, and then other people are facilitating the other spaces. And so what we were able to do was actually create these really like intimate conversations. We had 10 people per room with a trained assigned facilitator so we had 30 some odd rooms in that one Zoom link for people who identified as white. And at first it was just having them get into rooms and have them reflect on what happened earlier that day, uh, what they what their feelings and responses were to the two talks they heard in the morning. The second time they got to choose, not just that they were in this room with other people who identified like they did, but a specific topic. So race and uh, incarceration, race and healthcare, that kind of thing. Uh, and so, uh, how do we get people to quickly let me know what topic they want so I can assign them to the room? That was one of my challenges. But I have to tell you, I figured that out. And the result was was transformational. It was unexpected. It was memorable. And it's not at all like that boring webinar that you're all picturing when you think about, oh, another Zoom event, oh, bad Zoom, right? So instead, it, it allowed people in small groups of less than 10 or up to 10 to engage around a really kind of emotionally difficult topic, but within the context of the work they did or the work they were passionate about. And this was actually something I couldn't imagine now doing in person. Just think about the resources needed to pull this off in an in-person event, how big a space you would need to give people the instruction to gather for 600 people in a ballroom and then spread out to all these different you know, rooms, or you'd have, you know, 300 people sitting in separate tables of 10 in a ballroom, how loud would that room be? How hard would it be to feel focused and intimate in a room that vibrant? What about the number of volunteers you would need to guide people to go to the right table? Okay, now your second time, you're going to go to this other table, you know, just the, the, the sheer effort. So here I'm, I'm realizing that it's because we had thoughtful, strategic, purpose first event design and quality online facilitation this event was possible. And so with that idea in mind, I'm gonna now share with you what we're gonna to cover today um, and uh, give you a couple of quick wins right at the start of this. So uh, this is my agenda on the left side of the screen. I'm gonna be first talking about what does purpose versus design even mean? Then we're gonna get into a section about getting ready. This is the time before you let people into the room, my, my best practices. And there are use cases for all kinds of other options, but this is sort of a good general way to approach things. And then I have a little more detailed section around ready, set, go. That is the content when you have participants in the room with you. Everything from the welcome remarks to the closing remarks, I will give you some best practices to think about. And then we will also talk about best practices for Q&A. Uh, uh, as well as within that. And we'll have questions throughout and at the end as well. Now on the right side of the screen, there is a picture of a fireman in a full fireman outfit with a fire hose blasting. And that's because a lot of times when we're learning new information, it will feel 
like drinking from a fire hose. It'll feel a bit overwhelming. My hope for you is that you leave here with two or three actionable next steps that will help you improve how you show up on Zoom as a host, speaker, or participant, right? Now, if you get more than that, fantastic. But know that you will get access to my slides. I'm going to actually have a little survey at the end asking for feedback. If you go through the process of giving me some quick feedback, uh, you will get immediate access to my slides as well. I will drop other links and information into chat at the end, ways to stay in touch with me, other free information I have uh, created for you. Now, uh, that is my little suitcase, right? The little suitcase you see there. All those resources are already packaged up for you. So feel free to take lots of notes, but don't feel overwhelmed. Please try to pace yourself. Now, I to help you pace yourself, I'm going to have what I call a pause button. Uh, every now and again throughout my presentation, there'll be a screen coming up that is all white with a little pause button symbol. And that is a moment where I would love for you to go into chat, which is down here in the middle, and uh, open up chat and write in any takeaways you've had from the last segment. So if you haven't taken any notes yet, take a moment to just jot down one takeaway in chat. Um, if, uh, if you're a person who takes lots of notes on pen and paper, that's great, but I'd still love to hear your best takeaway so far. If you have a question at the end of that segment, and when I pause like that or any point, please write the word question in all caps before whatever your question is in chat. It's gonna help it ease, make it easier for me to spot your question and uh, respond to it. And I want, this is my first takeaway that I, like a quick one. Um, and I kind of want to see uh, your faces as this happens. So if you have the ability to have your camera on, uh, please do so. It helps me not just be speaking to a, to, you know, a brick wall. Um, so if you put your cursor in chat as if you're about to send a message to all of us, and if you're on a Mac, hold down command and then tap the plus key. The plus key has a plus and equal sign on it. So if you hold down command on a Mac and then tap the plus equals key, or if you're on a PC, hold down control and tap the plus equals key, you will see the font size will go from 100%, next tap 120, 104, 150, 180, and then 200. So that's how I can see more information really quickly um, by just glancing over and I'm able to see uh, what people are are saying in here. So, um, <laughs> all right. So now this, this, I just wanted a quick way for people <laughs> to do this. Uh, right. Big takeaway already. Right, Diane. Now, here's the cool thing is that that will now stay as default. Um, when you sign on to Zoom again with that device, it will stay at that percentage. And then you'll get your eyes will get used to that percentage. And you might want to increase it again. But boy, 100 percent is really tiny. Um, all right. Now, the next thing I want to do to help you have a better experience, if you look at the top of your screen, it says Robbie Samuels is presenting his slides, right? It's the screen. And the next one, it says view options. You see the little view options? Click view options. There'll be a drop down. Make sure that there's a check marks next to side by side mode. Now, once you have click on view options, the top of your screen, side by side mode, select that, make there's a green check mark next to it. Once that's check marked, what will happen is you will see me on the right side of your screen and my slides on the left. And then in between, there's this little slider, which someone once told me was called a slider. I don't know if that's true, but I've now told everyone else. So who knows? Maybe it is. Um, you can move it from left to right to make my slides bigger or smaller, to make me bigger or smaller. Okay. You can also always go to view on the top and change whether you see gallery view or speaker view. So you've got a lot you can do to design your own experience. With that, I'd love to get a sense of who is in the room. So I'm going to launch a poll. Now, this poll has four questions in it, which means that as you answer a poll, you're going to need to scroll down on the right side. And you'll know that you can, you've can. you answered all four questions when you see the submit button. So take a moment and let me know a little bit about your experience with Zoom. So first question is, what is your confidence level with Zoom? Now, 10 is the most confident, one being less confident. So somewhere in there is your answer. Uh, question two, how experienced are you with online facilitation? So helping manage the room in a Zoom or Teams or you know some other WebEx type environment. And then uh, number three, how experienced are you with in-person facilitation? Uh, I mentioned before we got started that if you have those skills, there's there's some transfer into this knowledge base, but there's some technical things that you might need to learn today. And then the fourth and final question is, what types of a virtual events will you be hosting? And you can choose more than one. So go ahead and um, select all that. When you get to the very bottom, hit 
uh, submit. Now, a little note, if you ever do something like this with, uh, with a poll and you've got other speakers in the room who have a co-host ability, the only thing a host or co-host can do with a poll is close it. <laughs> and I did have this happen where I had a CEO of a big company uh, accidentally close the poll. <laughs> so um, twice. And so I had to, I had to, from then on, I remembered I had to you know, tell these people this thing. So I always go for uh, either 70% participation or two minutes. We're at a minute and a half. We've already got 77%. So I'm going to count down from five, four, three, two, one. Here I am hitting out. Well, someone else just squeezed in there. Great job. Share the quick results here to get a sense of who's in the room. All right. So uh, we've got someone in here who is a genius a fellow genius when it comes to Zoom. I wonder if it's someone I've actually given some training to in the past. I know my friend Nicole's here and she's pretty confident with this. Uh, but I see some eights and nines, which is wonderful. Lots of sevens. Now this, by the way, was not the answer that people were giving in 2020. <laughs> so a lot of this is that you have a familiarity with the product, which is fantastic. Now we're talking about how to use it in a different format, like really for the facilitation piece. And again, I'm seeing it. There's a, there's a nice skew towards more uh, advanced, which is wonderful. And some people here who I think are going to learn a lot about the capabilities of Zoom. So um, what I love about this is that I get to actually um, uh, teach, it's sort of a train the trainer. So if you have more experience with Zoom, you can listen in for a train the trainer, meaning you can take what I'm showing and teach your team or teach your board or teach other people what the, some of the stuff that I'm I'm doing. And I even have resources you can use to share. And then uh, in-person facilitation, not surprised to see that um, a, a large majority of people here do have um, lots of facilitation in-person facilitation experience. And then lastly, uh, I'm actually really happy to see that the top response, 76% of people who answered said that 60 to 90 minute workshops, masterclasses and trainings are um, are the ones that uh, they, uh, they're planning most to be here. Although I see quite a few other responses in here. Um, what I do is I try to focus, I'm gonna stop share now. Um, uh, uh, someone asked, how are you viewing the results? I, when I hit share screen, you should see the results on your side right now. Um, and yeah, then, uh, oh, oh, and someone may have inadvertently the just, the uh, unmuted. So we'll just turn that off. And in fact, here's a little secret. I can actually take away your ability to, uh, unmute yourself, which I just did. And so we get later on, uh, is it getting you giving a chance to chit chat? Let me make sure I reopen that line. Um, uh, it's under security in case the host wants to know. All right, uh, as we wrap up this section here, um, uh, I just wanna say that the reason I focus on 60 to 90 minute programs is that if you have an understanding of how to use a, a well-designed 60 to 90 minute program, that's like a building block of a longer day or a multi-day event. So if you can create great design and facilitation within those 60, 75, 90 minute blocks of time, then you have to have adequate amounts of time in between for breaks because people do need breaks even when they're on virtual. I know so often people um, think, you know, just keep barreling forward. Uh, but we're, you know, even the Sims, remember the Sims family, the virtual Sims family, they got bathrooms. Uh, so we should, you know, as humans, as biological beings, we should get a chance to take a break. Um, all right. So uh, with that, I'm going to also now uh, just share with you um, purpose first design. So uh, this is a really quick overview of what what it is because I think it's something you you get a better sense of as you use it so purpose first design takes people from thinking one thing to thinking another so in this case I want to help you move from thinking uh oh, zoom fatigue to thinking hmm, zoom intrigue right I want to move you from feeling one thing to feeling another and so then that and now in this case it's like from feeling not really very tech savvy to feeling capable on taking on these new tech ideas. And then lastly, from doing one thing to doing another thing, right? It's you're trying to move people and you might not need all three. You might be like one or two things that are primary for any session you're doing. Um, in this case, I want to move you from that sort of death by PowerPoint that I described earlier to creating intentional engagement in this format. And so this is now going to be your chance to play with this a little bit. So in chat, um, without hitting enter, just draft a response to me. Do not hit enter. Remember the instructions. Do not hit enter. I want you to think of a past or upcoming event that you are hosting, speaking at, maybe even participating at, uh, and think about what are the to and froms for that event. You're moving people from thinking, feeling, and doing 
what to hopefully thinking, feeling, and or doing something else. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds to write your response in chat. And then I'm going to count down and tell you when to hit enter. So don't hit enter yet. Awesome. All right. Countdown. Go ahead and click enter. I love this. So what I just did for you, by the way, what I call this is, uh, this is my waterfall debrief. <laughs> it's one of the ways to give a different kind of interaction. And part of what happens is by hitting pause, right? Your brain didn't have to read the answers while typing your response. It's as close to an analog moment as we can give people in a digital space. So it allowed your brain to focus on your answer alone. And then as we hit enter, they all flooded in. And then we get to all take a moment to kind of read through each other. So um, I'm going to just read out Steve's thinking they don't know how to lead their company unsustainably to thinking that they can have an impact. So that's thinking from one thing to thinking another, right? Um, Kathy's doing yoga teacher training, and she wants them to go from feeling like a practitioner to feeling like a teacher. Um, from having maybe the knowledge of a practitioner to a knowledge of a teacher, from being a practitioner to being a teacher, it kind of works for all three of those. Um, from Diane says, from thinking, feeling uncomfortable to thinking they enjoy and feel comfortable online, right? So, uh, and Sonia, really succinctly, from boredom to engagement. <laughs> so, um, this is a great exercise. Uh, uh, okay, Steve says, uh, in sus sustainability, not un. Um, so. This is an exercise that if you're doing something with a group, I recommend that you actually um, uh, sit down together to really think about uh, what your what your goals are. What is the objective? Now, just take a moment just to kind of pause and, and, and reflect. If there's anything that you have a question about, please write the word question in all caps before your word question, uh, your question in chat. And otherwise, jot down any takeaways you have thus far. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you a moment. There'll be more time to do this later. Um, I see a question from earlier from Brenda Meller and she says, can you force attendees to one view or does everyone have the ability to select their view? Everyone has the ability to select their view. If you are in the main room, you can spotlight like I've done. And so I'm in the main spotlight and you aren't seeing each other. But if you want to see everyone else who has their camera on, you can always go to view on the top right and change to gallery view. So you have some agency. Um, uh, it it also means that the default settings of Zoom like don't have the side by side view set up for some reason, and so now that you've got the view options, you've got the side by side. Uh, now it will actually um, be that way going forward for your device. All right, let me spot if there's any other questions in here. Um, uh, I see some takeaways in here. Uh, the waterfall idea was a hit. Explanation of the using the tools, uh, liking the pause. Uh, have everyone press enter together. That's brilliant. Um, great. Um, and, and you can send the question to everyone, not just me, but I see someone sent me a question to me. Uh, how can I capture a record of participants at any given time? Um, you can't quite do that, but you can download a report of the attendance and it'll tell you how long people attended uh, and when they logged in and out. So you could probably do a little bit of sleuthing from that. Um, all right, so, uh, and then Gina asked me a question that I'll answer as we move forward. Uh, is Zoom the best or do you use other platforms? Personally, I've invested a lot of money, time and effort to engage with and understand Zoom as it keeps changing, growing. And I, I have not really seen it not meet a need that a client has had. There are some tools that I will sometimes use because they are so specifically and uniquely perfect for that situation. Uh, but there's often a way that Zoom will work. And one of the reasons I like Zoom is so many of us are so confident using it as if I were to teach you how to use another tool from scratch, you wouldn't even know how to unmute. <laughs> so it's nice to kind of stay with that uh, as much as possible. All right. So now we, we have here is this is the uh, what I call a you are here slide. So we pause. I answer a couple of quick questions. It gives me a chance to kind of scroll through and see what's happening in chat without being distracted from looking at the camera, which you'll notice I'm doing as much as possible. And then we go to the you are here slide. Picture it like a train station. This is the next station 
we're going into. So we're getting into the getting ready section. I'm going to move this again pretty quickly because uh, if you're not familiar with these features, you can go learn a little bit about them through the resources I will share or through zoom.us or through uh, YouTube videos I've created, others have created. But the first thing I like to make sure I do is turn on captions. And um, we did not do that this time around because I wanted to like make sure that you all knew what that looked like. Uh, so when we click on the captions, you will see that they pop up and um, they're now on. And so if you would be benefited from having captions on and follow along with the AI interpreted uh, text, you can do so um, by clicking on the CC button on the bottom of your screen. It's the bottom right. And if you don't have that enabled in your own Zoom account, you'll find that in zoom.us settings. There's actually quite a few things I'll be referencing in zoom.us settings. Another thing I try to do is put my notes as close to the top of the camera as possible. Um, just to, uh, that I'm not looking down here to, to glance at my notes, just to make that a little bit easier. And, uh, and then I also try to close as many irrelevant tabs as possible to have the best performance of my computer as I can and not be you know distracted by other things that are happening on my computer. Uh, I also let only speakers in before letting in participants. So we actually did that. I came in talking with the uh, with the host and um, we got a chance to, to work out. It was actually a setting that I needed to adjust. We had a chance to go out and come back in. But then once everyone, like we're ready and we're ready to like open the room, then I click as a host or co-host on security, uh, which you will only see when you're a host or co-host. It's going to be down next to the participants button. And you'll see the little blue part on the right side of the screen. It says enable waiting room. If you uncheck that, that opens the waiting room. And here's how I'll explain this. If you're a teacher and you tell your students, okay, uh, if you if you come a little early and the door is closed, please wait in the hallway. I'm finishing setting up the room. If the door is propped open, come on in. So the door being closed is the waiting room being enabled and everyone queues up in the hallway. But then once you're ready to like let students in, you don't want to keep going to the door to open it one at a time for each person, right? You don't want them to accidentally see a closed door and just wait and not knock, not even let you know they're there. You don't want someone to get stuck in the waiting room, right? So what I do is I prop the door open. What that means is I actually uh, go to the security badge which is down here by participants when you're a host or co-host and I uncheck the enable waiting room. And at that point, anyone can come in. That What that does is it removes the top part, you know, where it says like so-and-so is in the waiting room. As a presenter, I find that a little bit gracious. It's like, oh, my nerves. Cause I'm like, it's right where I'm looking. Um, the other thing uh, that this helps with is that no one has to monitor that or keep, keep letting people in. Um, and the other thing, please don't do this. Don't turn on that doorbell. There's this bell that chimes as people enter and exit, and there is a way to set it to only host and co-host can hear it. But again, as a host, as a presenter, it's like, oh, I don't want to hear that the whole time. So this way we don't have to worry about that. Now, note to self, you cannot disable the waiting room unless you have the passcode enabled for that meeting. So to make your life easier, always have a passcode, but at zoom.us settings, embed the passcode in the link. So you'll this will make sense. If you're in zoom.us settings, you will see an option that says embed passcode in link. And you should just say, yep, do that. Because then every link you make, people just click. This is not really security. I don't know what it is, but Zoom wants us to have this step. But if you have that, then you can disable the waiting room in order to let everyone in without having to worry about getting them stuck. All right. The other thing I like to do is make all... Uh, folks hosts co-hosts all the speakers co-hosts so I can spotlight them so they can share their slides they all like will appear at the top of the list um, on the participants window um, on the right side of the screen are the steps to do that you're welcome to take screenshots also remember I'm going to give you the opportunity to get all my slides at the end uh, and then I do a quick AV check so there's some things that I cover here um, I want to make sure the camera is eye level. So if it's a laptop, put it on some boxes or a book so that you're not staring down. Feel free to adjust as you're listening to me say this. Uh, sit centered in the screen. Uh, tilt the, the camera, the laptop cover towards you to take away all this extra space above your head. Have about two fingers of space above your head. 
right? So that you're sitting nice and tall, sitting like there. That still looks great. And then uh, lights. So your light should be lights, camera, you. I have a wall of windows here. If they were all open, half my face would be flooded with light. The other half would be uh, in shadow. The other thing is I have a ring light and you can tell the difference when I turn it off versus turn it on. Um, for some reason, at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people came on online with their backs to a window. Uh, I saw a lot of really lovely manicured landscapes, but I couldn't see the people because they were backlit. <laughs> so don't sit with the lighting behind you or by the side of you. Really, ideally, it's in front of you. And last thing, I always do a sound check to make sure that we can hear them. Um, if you have the money to spend on anything, improve your audio because our brains want to disconnect if the audio is bad, but our brains can kind of fill in the gaps if the video is a little bit glitchy. So, uh, and then lastly, I, I do want the last two things like uh, check for polls to make sure that they're all correct for myself as a speaker or if I'm hosting, producing an event. And then uh, I ask if there are any resources that someone wants me to put into chat for them. Or as a speaker, I might say, here are links that I want you to put into chat. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. We just turned on the captions. So I don't know, Jen, whether we can uh, get those, but they should be saved with the recording. So you can ask um, uh, Kazai if she can handle that for you. Um, you can actually uh, enable things for yourself on your own end. Uh, just like Nic uh, Nicole uh, suggested, you can actually have the, the captions showing on your side and you may be able to, to record them from here. Speaking of which, let's just pause for a moment and see what other questions or takeaways people have in chat. I'll give you just a moment. Uh, light camera you, yes. All right, we're gonna move forward. I don't see anyone. Uh, I try to use um, uh, this moment to kind of make sure I'm not missing anything that is gonna leave people like confused. So I'm mostly gonna answer questions that are uh, just like the kind that need just an explanation in order for people to move on. Like if I use an acronym, that kind of thing. And then we'll we'll save some questions towards the end. All right, here's where we're going into next. We're going into the ready, set, go section of this. All right, welcome remarks. Do not start by thanking people. Do not start by thanking the host. Thank you all for being here. Do not start by like complaining that your slides were hard to set up or how much uh, you, were, you were rushing this morning or how little sleep you got the night. I don't know. People just like get on and thoughtlessly yammer about stuff. Use that opening really thoughtfully and ideally use it by looking at the camera with no slides. So you'll notice that when I first came on, I started talking to you about March, 2020. And I brought you back to that moment. And we talked about what that was like and what the pre 2020 time period was like for online and what we we're all trying to do today. And then I started telling you the story about what was possible and what I'd been creating and designing with my clients. And so that is a way of kind of engaging with people. Another few things to think about, is this a new topic? Acknowledge previous conversations, that kind of thing. Um, you might wanna do some group agreements. I just put a few on that slide. If you type in group agreements, you'll find lots and lots of options on Google. Uh, and then I like to find out who's in the room. So that's where I did that quick poll to get a sense of people's comfort and um, sort of uh, skill level when it comes to different parts of, of Zoom. It also helps you see that you're not the only one in the room on either end of that scale. And then I love to share a knowledge gap, which is one of the things I did, right? And you're probably wondering, what is a knowledge gap? Is that something I'm supposed to know? You know, that's kind of a good example of a knowledge gap. It's something a little unexpected, unusual, memorable. So that story I was telling about what life had been like and how I'd suddenly, not suddenly, after years of figuring out and playing with Zoom, figured out a way to design this really incredible uh, Zoom experience around anti-racist discussions and dialogues, that was unexpected. It's memorable. It's catchy. It might be um, you tell an anecdote or a, a, a stat uh, for the work that you're doing. If you have a panel, maybe you're sharing the the uh, takeaway of the end result that one of your panelists got, not telling the story how they got there, but just simply telling the like amazing result that they got. And then what happens is our brains lean forward and we want to understand, well, how is that possible? And then that's the rest of the Once the participants are engaged, now you can share the rest of it with them. Two alternatives to the knowledge gap. One is why care? 
This could be like, why do you care? Why do we care? A format of that is sort of what Barack Obama did for the 2004 Democratic National Convention. Uh, why me? Why us? Why now? It's a good format for some talks as an opening. And lastly, what it what is it? Like sometimes it's just, hey, everybody, we're here today to talk about how to fill out Form 34B so you can get reimbursed for travel. <laughs> I don't need to tell you a big story about it. Like you want to know this information and I'm here to tell it to you. Um, all right, so quick to see uh, any com any questions, uh, please put them into chat. We're now moving into interactive uh, tools. Um, a quick one that we can learn is the yes, no, nonverbal feedback, which you need to enable at zoom.us settings. Uh, and that was actually the setting we had to, to leave and come back in to have it be enabled. Now, I'm kind of curious, um, has anyone used this feature? And if you have used this feature as a presenter, go to the reactions button on the bottom right of your Zoom and click the green check mark. And if you have not, choose the green, the red X. So yes is the green check mark and uh, the uh, no is the red X. And on my side, any host or co-host can see a live tally by opening up the participant window on the bottom corner of the participant window, there's a live tally. So like right now I can tell that 15 of you are awake, which is good news. That's a third, about a third, a little more than a third maybe of you. So um, thank you. More people are, are answering the question now. So that's a quick way of getting um, uh a, a sense of our people in the room. And so Scott, this green check mark red X, uh, what I like about this, this is this stays up just like uh, ha raise hands, but it doesn't cue people up at the top of the screen. It allows them to have a uh, different, like a, it's a binary question. You know, it, it, I have other ways, like if you have a, a range, that's where you really want to get into a poll. But if it's a binary, are, are folks needing a break? Yes, no. You know, am, am I... Uh, you know, am I like going too fast? Yes, no. Like you could do little things like that. Now, um, they do not appear on the recording. Uh, and uh, this is, they're actually staying up. You'll notice that yours stayed up there. Um, just like the raised hand, they stay up until you take them down. So make sure you know how to remove them. So if you're a host or co-host and you have the participant window open, you'll click on the more button. And there's uh, on the bottom right corner of the participant window there's a more button and there's this uh, clear all feedback so i like to i like to wave my hand ready one two and i and then i wave my hand my hand has nothing to do with it but it's you know misdirection so um you now have nothing showing now be careful that you have not asked people to use the raised hand feature at the same time because it will wipe out all their raised hands um, but that could be a, a nice tool to check in of course we all know about polls you just uh, participated in, in one earlier that had four questions polls are for paid zoom only so that's something for you to know. Uh, and there's a few options for why you might use a poll on the right side of the screen, topics to dig into, uh, get a sense of how comfortable people are or knowledgeable they are on a topic, maybe where people are feeling stuck around a topic. But did you know that there are advanced polls? Advanced polls are a thing and most people are not taking full advantage of them, including me in the session. I didn't, I don't have any in here, but I do want you to know about them. So here are the options for advanced polls. This is something you need to enable at zoom.us settings again with paid zoom, but you have matching from column A to column B. You can have people rank their choices from one to 10. Um, they can type in a short or long answer, which means if you've been using a third party tool that to get people to gather their information and you probably aren't getting a high response rate because people get really confused. In fact, you know what happened when the pandemic started and a lot of new people got on Zoom, Zoom automatically defaults to full screen. And when you click a link in chat, Zoom goes away and your Chrome shows up full screen. And all these people were like, oh, I lost Zoom. And what they got trained to do was never click the link. <laughs> and so you think, oh, this is easy. I'm going to put a link to this, this third party, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I'm not, I'm not gonna touch that link. And so you're gonna get probably a 70 to 90% response rate if you use built-in Zoom versus a third party, which could be a third to half of the respondents answering in that poll. Some are gonna answer in chat, they don't not gonna answer at all. And so being able to collect short and long answers typed in is really cool. You can also have them rates uh, one through 10, which is kind of what we did, uh, but a fancier way of doing one through 10. And then lastly, um, 
they have fill in the blank and fill in the blank makes me think about um, uh, a quiz, which is actually one of the options. You can actually build in the answer to a question. So, um, you know, like what color is grass? And, you know, you give four answers and then everyone chooses, you show what choices people chose and then you press a button that shows the answer is green unless you're my house and it's August, in which case, no. Um, so Brown would probably be more answer. Uh, so that's just, it's really cool and it's fun and it's interactive um, and getting people to like participate uh, and welcome. Alicia says it's her first time using Zoom. Awesome. I don't know where you've been the last three and a half years, but welcome, welcome to joining us. So here's the thing to know about this. I did not recommend this feature when it first came out because there's a minimum requirement that everyone joining the call needs to have in order to see um, that. And uh, that minimum requirement is uh, uh, 5.8.3. The good news is that Zoom now does these quarterly forced updates, these mandatory updates every quarter. Uh, they're going to make sure you're not more than nine months behind. That's mostly for security reasons. So if you never use Zoom or very infrequently use Zoom, every time you log in every year, you're going to get an update forcing you to get to the, it's like the newest thing. Um, we passed the, the minimum requirement for this back in uh, November of 22. So advanced polls now is a thing everybody has access to. Um, what I would recommend is don't, uh, don't wait to update. Um, don't wait for that to automatically happen. If you're getting money, through Zoom as a coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, teacher. Don't wait for Zoom to tell you that you're nine months behind and then update you. Uh, you probably want to set a schedule. Now, at the zoom.us settings that I mentioned before, there is actually an option for a um, for a reminder to auto update either fast or slow. I recommend most people choose slow. It'll be about every month or so. It'll be for critical updates. I have fast, which means every little minor thing, I'm they're like, we fixed a bug. I, I don't know what that means. And they're like, okay, I'm like, I got update again. Um, it also means I get the newest uh, like access to like things like advanced polls while it's still broken. <laughs> and I play with them to see what they are. So so um, I think it's pretty cool. And Scott's gonna play with that. I love that. And um, let's just take a pause and see what people's thoughts are. And I saw some questions coming in as well which I'll try to respond. So go ahead, any takeaways in chat, any questions, please write the word question in all caps before your question. All right, so Diane asked, uh, how do you let people in the room? So if you have the waiting room enabled and you have passcode enabled, you would go to security as a host or co-host. You'll see security badge down here on the bottom left of your Zoom window, and you will take the check mark off enable waiting room. I have a video that walks you through that, which I will share access to that later. Um, so you can review that if you'd like. Uh, but once the waiting room has been disabled, then people can come right back in, like without problem. Um, so interesting, Steve's talking about his chat window going away. I have noticed that the chat keeps like, uh, some things are, they're changing the things on Zoom, like it keeps being attached to my window sometimes, not other times. Uh, you might be that you need to actually update your Zoom, Steve. It might be like time, something might be a little wonky about the version you have. Um, that doesn't sound like a normal thing to have happened, but, um, but Scott's talking about using advanced polls. Uh, so Brenda's asking, where do you get the place to update? So if you go to zoom.us and you go to settings, the one, if you just scroll from the top to the bottom, you'll start with like, I'll ask you questions about your waiting room. Just read all of those. If you've never dug under the hood, it's pretty interesting. Um, but go ahead and dig under those things. And then you'll see there's an option to ask you whether you want to be reminded fast or slow. Um, there's actually a couple of other places, like there's one other place to check, which I can get into, but I want to be careful of timing. Um, captions can be moved around. Yes, you can just drag, just drag it. So you drag it left or right. Cool. All right. I'm glad people are, I appreciate learning about this. Here's a really meaty part of this presentation. Um, I wrote this book um, that I, you see the little 
see the image here, which is actually something, if you wanna learn how to do this, it's called a custom video filter, this image up on my screen here. I am not using a third party tool to do this. This is a Zoom function called a custom video filter. And how to do it is not actually in the book, uh, but it is in the bonus content, which you can get at breakoutaboredroom.com. And I will share that link later. Um, but uh, I wrote 10,000 words in this book about breakout rooms because there is so much to say. So again, I'm gonna share a high level about this because we could dig in, we could spend an hour and a half on breakout rooms and we don't have that time. So there are different reasons that you might use a breakout room. Um, icebreakers, shares, discussion, and deep dive. And you'll notice that the amount of time for each one of these changes, how many people changes. So please stop choosing the amount of time and the number of people based on how many people are in the room. How many people are in the room is irrelevant you can now have 100 breakout rooms by default. That's a new thing that happened earlier this year in January, February. And so with 100 breakout rooms, you'd have to have over 500 people before you, you'd you have to go more than five people per room. And so you can see there's a lot of reasons you might want to have just two or three people or four or five people, and it leads to different levels of discussion. And if you have more than seven people or more than 15 minutes, please have someone designated as a facilitator because it's it the conversations get swanky. No one's there to control and manage like people's time, staying on topic, et cetera. So how many minutes should be back to what is the activity we're trying to achieve? And then what you want to figure out is um, what kind of does, like style of room? Are you going to do the automatic random? Are you going to have people manually assigned or are you going to do the participants choose room? And again, it depends on your trying your objective. So going back to purpose first design, you're moving people from thinking, feeling, and are doing one thing to thinking, feeling, and are doing another. What is the purpose of this breakout room within that context? And that will let you know kind of which of these you're going to choose. Then you have to think about how we're going to introduce this topic to get people's engaged like in in it not just like throw them in and so one thing i like to do is one question one question not about a current challenge because then you're gonna have people getting a hot seat um suggest the speaking order hey let's go alphabetically by first name let's go alphabetically by last name let's go reverse alphabetical by first name that's basically the options i try to go for is like either reverse or alphabetical first or last Shortest to, lowest, shortest to longest hair, color of shirt, all of these are subjective. I can't even tell you the number of times I've discussed horoscopes in the last three years because people send us into a room and said, go by birth date order. <laughs> that was not the topic of the room. <laughs> so don't, don't be silly about it. Like just pick first and last name, which hopefully is all showing there. And I always say if your, your last name's not showing and that's the prompt, you go first, which either they are happy to go first or they put their last name on. And then set timers. There's some tools built into Zoom under options for breakout rooms. Again, how to do this is in the materials I will give you access to, but it will close the room automatically at X number of minutes and have a final number of seconds. A note about this, by default, there are 60 seconds uh, at the room closes. So if you have a countdown clock for 10 minutes and it gets to zero, and then all of a sudden there are 60 seconds left, it's a little bit awkward. Does anyone know what awkward means? It's when you have this big gushing goodbye with someone at a restaurant, and then you walk together in the same direction to your parked cars. It's a little awkward. You just, so it's like the breakout room numbers are going down. You're like, all right, it was really nice talking to you. Was, uh, hey, all right. And then it's like a minute and one person just leaves. Someone else is like, oh, I can start a whole new conversation. Someone else is like, I, you know, it's like a little bit, it's a little jarring. So I tend to do just 15 seconds if people are going to be um, having that clock. And the clock shows up in the top right corner for them. Tell them how many minutes per person and say the question out loud. Um, give your own response to it and put the prompt in chat. Now, there are some different debriefs in here. Uh, one, nominate someone in chat. So I like to do like a win-win, share a personal professional win. I'll say, hey, nominate someone in your group who had a particularly awesome win. That's one way to get some engagement. Uh, you can ask people to write a takeaway in chat. You can have People do the waterfall that I did earlier where they pause and then write their comments. You can ask who took notes. These people are probably not grabbing the mic all the time in, in the breakout room. So give them an opportunity to share their highlights, probably some decent highlights. And then last but not least, there's always the self-nomination. There are people like me. 
me, me. <laughs> I am an outgoing extrovert. I don't even know what the question is. My hand is raised, right? I'll, I'll happily fill airspace, but you don't want that to be your default all the time. And then why is it that a breakout room that's 10 minutes long is actually 17 minutes? Why is that? Okay. You've got your 10 minutes. Before your 10 minutes, you've got the two minutes to set up the question, to share it, to give your answer to it. So people start thinking of their answer to it, to give instructions about who goes first, to put the prompt in the chat. That all takes some time. Then you have 10 minutes. Now we're at 12. And then you want to leave time for that debrief. It could be as quick as two minutes, but it's probably going to be at least five minutes. So suddenly you've got you know, 17 minutes for, for a 10 minute. If you've been eating into your Q and A all along, that's basically what's happening is uh, you're not giving people a chance um, uh, to really uh, do the process fully. And you're not, you're like eating up the rest of the time at the end of your session, your Q and A. So we're in the Q and A uh, portion. Again, if you have any questions, takeaways, fantastic top opportunity to do that. Um, we're getting close to wrapping up. We've got about 10 minutes of time. Um, I'm going to give you lots of resources after and ways to connect to me for free. I run monthly free events. <laughs> so uh, I know that some of you are, again, like that's a lot of information you're giving me. One or two takeaways that you can implement right away would be amazing. Okay, why is 10 minutes 17? 10 minutes to the breakout room, two minutes for the setup before the breakout room, and five minutes after equals 17. On your run of show, on your agenda, mark out 17 minutes. If you only put breakout rooms 10 minutes and you're like, why are we running late? That's why you're running late. Uh, if you wanna, Arlene, if you wanna decrease your font size in, um, in chat window, you would just hold down command or control depending on whether you're on uh, Mac is command, control is PC. And then there's the minus key uh, next to the plus key. So you can toggle between the two. Um, so Scott, I, it's about design. I, it, it, Scott says, I tend to dislike breakout rooms. It feels isolating from the rest of participants ideas. You know, it's really, what's the purpose of doing it? Don't do it just to do it. It's so that, you know, I do it to warm up the crowd. I might put three people in a room for six minutes to share their wins for the week. So they get a chance to talk to other people before the session begins. I might have them get four or five people in a room to discuss what they just learned, what their what their next step or takeaway is going to be, um, or what's their biggest, what's the, what are they going to implement the next two weeks? I might put them in a breakout room with fifteen to twenty people to do a little mini workshop with a, with a facilitator, um, so that people have choice and don't all have to stay on one topic. So, um, really depends on what you're trying to achieve. Design with purpose in mind, and I think it'll be be pretty good about this. All right, cool. So we're now going to talk about the content. Again, just high level, some ideas that you want to think about just so you don't do the default thing all the time. One is there's there are three options that I can think of for content styles. One is lecture. Please don't hide behind your slides. You'll notice that occasionally and hopefully somewhat thoughtfully, artfully, I am <laughs> taking my slides down, looking right at the camera and speaking to you when a point can be made better that way and not just staying behind the slides the entire time. This requires a little bit of practice. There's a floating toolbar that says stop, share. I click on that and then I look at the camera and I talk to you. And while I'm talking to you, I'm pulling up the next slide and I'm pouring it back up. And I'm looking at the camera the whole time. It's sleight of hand and it's not. Magicians aren't magic. In fact, they're probably the people who are the most like, oh yeah, there's nothing real in the world. <laughs> everything is like, <laughs> there's a trick behind everything. So uh, pause slides, the you are here slides, leave time for Q&A. Those are things for you to think about. Fireside chat is different than a panel. Why do I like a fireside chat? It's a way to deep dive with one or two people around a topic. And on the right side of the screen, uh, I do not use teleprompter. I saw that question just pop in, Steve. Uh, on the right side of the screen, there is a list of possible reasons to have one or two people be interviewed. Uh, compare and contrast on a topic, two sides to a story, Maybe there's a, a joint effort or partnership story they can share. Uh, you can have one person do a deeper dive. And my favorite one is that it's so much easier if you've got a rookie speaker to prep them for a 10 minute interview around three pre-planned questions, then tell them they have 10 minutes to tell a succinct and clear story. I spent eight and a half months on a nine and a half minute TEDx talk. 
eight and a half months and I'm a professional speaker. So I will tell you that if you go grab a random member of your team or a ram member of your, your client's team and say, you've got 10 minutes to teach something, it's going to be much easier to prompt them with three questions than to ask them to come up with a really solid 10 minute talk It is hard to do. As you can tell, I can't even get it done in an hour. All right. Here's something else to know about panels. Panels can be awful. What I hate about them is when every single person is asked every single question. When there are five people being asked every single question, some people wait 30 minutes to get the microphone and the panelists are falling asleep, snoozing, bored, checked out, looking at their phone, doodling, working on their remarks to their next talk, distracted. It's not great. So pre-planning is key. One, do not give them the microphone to introduce themselves because they will take three minutes per person. And if you have three people on a panel, that's almost 10 minutes gone and you haven't even gotten to the topic. So the introduction is by the moderator and answers two questions. Why should we listen to this person and what might we learn? So the why should we listen to them is their credibility. Like what's the reason you invited them? They have what credibility? And then what might they learn is either the topic or a little takeaway that they're gonna just dive into. Get, get us intrigued, right? Design for interaction on the screen, you'll see there's lots of ways that you can prompt people. So you can pre-plan each of the three people have a primary question they know they're going to answer and they're going to have five minutes to answer. And they have been assigned a second question as a follow-up response for two minutes. And you just sort of weave this together. You do the math. This does not actually come up with 30 minutes. So I say three people for 30 minutes. If you do the math of three minutes for introductions and seven minutes per question times three is 21 plus three for, for introductions, that's 24. What's the extra six minutes? It's the moderator getting a chance to ask a natural follow-up question. So it really is a conversation we're witnessing as an audience and it's more interesting for them as well. Again, screenshots um, would be uh, very helpful. And I see Lori's just joining us. Yes, there will be a recording. Um, all the recordings are actually available and there's even an app that we can drop information about that again into chat. Um, okay, so uh, I see a question about uh, if you're in a breakout room um, and go ahead and any other questions you have, feel free to put them in. The thing about chat is only people who are in the room when the chat was written and posted can see it. So for instance, someone just joined us, they can't see what was in the chat before this point. If you're in a breakout room, you will only see what's in chat from the people in your current breakout room, not something that maybe someone wrote in the main room at that same time. So um, you you really you have, the, you have the main room or the big room as uh, as Nicole saying. Uh, and Nicole went through my my five percent advantage program. So she is a certified virtual event professional. Hashtag no more bad Zoom and really knows what she's talking about. Um, there is a way to broadcast a message to people in the in the breakout rooms as well, though. Um, all right, so any, I don't see any other big questions or takeaways. All right, Q&A, again, can be awesome and is mostly exhausting because what happens is, and I hope there's no one here named Bob because I always use the name Bob as an example. I don't see any Bob, so I'll go ahead. All right, so what happens is breakout uh, rooms end, talk ends, it's time for Q&A, and the first person who gets the mic is Bob, and Bob doesn't have a question. Bob has a story to tell and uh, not, not really sure what the point of the story is. Is there a question there? And uh, we want to really get the best kinds of questions into the room. And so I call, there's a difference between what I call generous questions and hyper specific questions. So a generous question is one where when answered, more people than not in the room appreciate hearing the answer. So there was a question earlier about how to change the font size on chat from, from bigger to smaller. I didn't actually mention that as I was introducing it. Um, slipped my mind. So that was a great question because it was a maybe almost a silly question. Like I probably could figure this out if I think about it long enough, but Hey, they were generous enough to ask it. And others were probably sitting there kind of like, Oh, do I, should I ask this question? So I'm really glad that I got asked because I got to clarify pretty quickly. And a lot of people were like, Oh yeah, that's helpful. I can make it bigger or smaller. Now hyper specific questions are the kind of questions you want to take offline. You want to use those questions in a one-to-one -one follow up of some kind. If, how you know they're hyper-specific, they require a lot of backstory <laughs> to get to the question. Um, that's hyper-specific. Notice that there wasn't a big backstory to how do I make the font size smaller in chat now that I made it bigger? That didn't require a whole song and dance. So those are the parameters. You set parameters with your audience before you dive into Q&A, you'll get better quality questions. The other thing that I love 
for Zoom, because I also design for in-person, is that we get to screen questions in chat. And you'll notice that I ask you to write the word question before your question in chat. Two reasons for this. One, I get to more easily spot the question versus the comments. And two, it reminds you to write a question <laughs> and not just a random statement that doesn't really end with a question mark. So it helps you formulate a better question and me spotting it. And then the uh, last couple of things on this is, yes, you can use the raised hand, which is a Zoom feature. And there is a way to have this show up on the, right now is on the current uh, Zoom we're in, it's not visible on the Zoom toolbar, but that is a new feature. If you go to zoom.us settings, you can look for the word raised hands and there is now a way to have it always showing on the toolbar, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, so Scott has an interesting question. Uh, what do you do if there are more good questions and time to answer them? Well, what I like to do is copy the questions for my, from when I'm producing an event, I copy the questions from chat into a shared Google doc with the speaker. And then either I tee up the question for the speaker or they are just reading questions off of it or vice versa. If I'm the speaker, I might have someone else do this for me. Um, we copy the person's name as well as the question. And the way you do this is you actually highlight the text, not just like there is a little three dots next to each question and it says copy, but that will only copy the text of the question, not the person's name. So what I'm saying is I highlight the entire thing. I'll just copy your question back in here. And the way it will show up in Google Docs is what I just put in for you. It'll put your name and your timestamp. And that way, I will focus on the questions that I want to prioritize because they're generous. Um, but if I can't get to a question or it's too high risk specific, I still know who asked it and I can follow up with them one on one. And I let people know that. So if there's something I missed, there's a way for, for me to follow up directly with them. And I also try to leave con my own contact uh, information so people can find me. Please never say, go ahead and unmute. Go ahead, and unmute. Hey, everyone, that was a great presentation. Uh, by Scott, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and unmute. Okay, in person, the equivalent would be, Scott, thanks so much for coming here to Marriott. So glad you were able to join us. Hey, folks, if you have any questions, go ahead and start talking. Like, that makes no sense. You would give people instructions about how to ask questions in person. Raise your hand, hand it in an index card, queue up to the microphones that are positioned in these parts of the room. Same thing give people instructions on how we're going to take questions. Ideally, do a little bit of an orientation at the beginning, like do your opening story. And like I did, I gave a little orientation, how I want you to use chat, how we're gonna interact, when the questions will be asked and answered. As we close up, here are my closing remarks, as well as my teaching on closing remarks. Um, if you have a speaker that you're hosting, thank them, the more specific, the better. Um, I like to do something I call calendaring, connecting and collaborating calendaring, connecting, collaborating. So calendaring is when I say, hey, what's one thing, and this is a question to you right now, what's one thing you learned today that you wanna implement in the next two weeks? Maybe you've got an event you wanna try it out on. A great way to try this is just to host for free a gathering of friends so you can play with some of this stuff. Think of one thing. Now what I want you to do is grab your calendar and find a time in the next two weeks to actually uh, do that. Right? Don't let this just be a thing that happened sort of in the past. Make sure that uh, it's something you're actually moving forward on. The connecting is that I want to give you ways to connect with each other. And so um, you might want to find an accountability partner or, or someone to share resources with. If anyone wants to put their LinkedIn contact info in right now, go for it. You know, If you want people to find you, this is a chance for you to drop in your, your information so people can stay in touch around different topics like this. And then lastly, how can I support you? Right, so in a moment, I'm going to show you um, how to get the the slides for today's uh, deck and uh, and other ways that you can reach me, like my website, numerobadzoom.com is also my monthly event, that kind of thing. But first, I want to do a quick poll to get a sense of how you're feeling now about Zoom. It's just two questions this time, so we'll get through it a lot quicker. Uh, the first question is about your confidence level now with Zoom and your confidence level now with online facilitation. Question one and question two. I see lots of responses coming real quick this time. You all know where these buttons are. All right. 
So again, I always go to 70% or two minutes. We got to 70% real quick this time. So I'm gonna count down from five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna end the poll, share the results. So um, it's interesting, I'm seeing another person, uh, Nicole, I think answered the confidence with Zoom. Uh, it skews a little bit higher. I see few, there's, there's no one, two, three or fours anymore for Zoom. That's fantastic. I love that. And the folks who are still answering fives and sixes, practice. That's absolutely the way to do this. Go find some friends, uh, alums from your from your college, whatever, buddies from work, and just practice these things. I got bet better really quickly by um, hosting my own event on a regular basis early on in the pandemic. And then confidence level now I see also skewing up as well. So that's fantastic. I always like to get a little bit of data. Um, but now this is your chance. Uh, go ahead and you can use the QR code if you'd like. Uh, and um, then you type in the uh, Zoom is the code. QR code, what you want to do is uh, hold your phone up, go to the camera function on your phone, hold it up to the QR code, and then it'll give you a little link, and then you can type Zoom. Or you can click on the link that I just put into chat and uh, enter Zoom there, and you'll get access to today's slides. Um, I do want to connect with folks on LinkedIn and would love for you to, to do that with me. Um, please let me know, send me a note and let me know that uh, you met me through here. Uh, I promise you lots of resources. So my third book, Breakout of Boredom, Low Tech Solutions for Highly Engaging Zoom Events includes a free resource library filled with uh, checklists, step-by-step -step guides, video tutorials, a uh, sample run of show, it shows you how to do the custom video filter like I have up here on my screen and lots more. And it's all at breakoutofboredom.com for the cost of an email. And if you don't want to stay on my email list, you can unsubscribe. No harm, no foul. And if you want to hang out with me on a regular basis, every uh, month I host a free monthly networking event, ideal for entrepreneurs. Uh, if you want to come and talk about Zoom-related things, business growth-related things, we're in and out of breakout rooms. You get to see what this looks like in action. We do a series of different types of breakout rooms. If you're making money off of Zoom right now, again, as a coach, consultant, uh, trainer, speaker, et cetera, then you might want to check out my next 5% Advantage program. The cohort starts in October. Uh, here's the reason it's called this. My wife was like, who wants to get 5% better? That doesn't seem very good. It's about getting 5% better every time you host or speak or even participate online, right? I'll give you a, a quick uh, thing about how to be a great participant. Okay, you're not a speaker, right? You're a participant. Be a person who writes either takeaways in chat throughout the entire event, right? You can stand, if it's a webinar, no one can see you, you'll stand out. And or if a, if a speaker mentions a resource, go find the link online and put it in chat with a little note about what the resource was, right? And if you have resources of your own to share at that point, no one will think you're spamming the chat because you're doing them a favor of curating. This is something we cannot do easily in person. Maybe back when we used to do the whole uh, the whole uh, live Twitter Twitter thing. Um, and then I have two resources for my website I want to mention. Um, I do produce virtual events and I'm happy to talk to you if you've got one or in person. I do an, an event design for in person as well. And you'll see a little note about that. And I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I've written three different books. I have a podcast, TEDx, et cetera. And you'll find all of that on my website. And then lastly, I do host a weekly gathering for a mere $25 a month called Content and Connection Club. You can hang out with me every single Friday uh, and we can connect there as well. Um, so I think I've dropped in all the links I meant to. I'm now gonna bring our host back up here with me. Thank you. I think I nailed the time. We I'm exactly the minute that we started, but 60 minutes later, here we are. <laughs> Thank you so much for that engaging jam-packed informative talk Ravi. now i'm so excited to uh to head on to this part of our event our takeaways and gratitude circle i know that a, a lot of our participants have already shared their takeaways bits and bits and pieces so i'm sure that a lot of you have a lot of takeaways from today's event so i want you to share this time your favorite one and how can this takeaway help you with your business. So we highly encourage you to raise your hand to share your takeaways that you had on this event, or if you want to give your appreciation for our speaker for today. Awesome. And, and the reactions button, you'll find the hand hiding under reactions, which which will change. And by the way, uh, mirroring is a thing. 
So when I point here, I'm actually pointing to the My Participants button. And what you're seeing is me point at my Reactions button. Quick test. Show me an L. Everyone, hold up your hands. Show me an L. Show me an L. All right. And I'm going to tell you who's got it, who's got it right. Uh, Gardening's got it right. Jacqueline's got it right. Christina's got it right. Uh, Sonora, nope. Sonora's backwards. Scott, nope. Scott, nope. Nope. Nick, Nicole, Nicole got it right. Nicole, you, you made me nervous there for a second there. <laughs> okay. So it's opposite of the way you see it with your own hand because I am standing in front of you. So uh, your right is my left. So if I want to point to the right, I have to go this way. So that's the top right corner. And too many people say things like go to the top right corner. And that's why it's confusing. So there you go. All right. You'll just learn more. We squeeze one more thing in. But if you want to go down here to reactions, and queue up, we will see you in the order that you use your raised hand and we'll invite you up on screen with us uh, to chat. <laughs> uh, Nicole, it's so good to see you here. So we actually have one question from Jan. Um, it was a direct message, but yeah. I believe she wanted to put in everyone. QR code accepted, but is not going through. Any ideas? Oh, uh, no, but... I will give you this link via chat. So we'll try it that way. Here we go. I'll put this link back in. So if you want to get my slides like immediately, uh, that's the way to do that. So click on the link talk.ac slash Robbie Samuels that I just put into chat. And um, while we're doing that, I'm going to also figure out whether I can see whether it's working on my end, if I can decode what happened here. Yeah, it's working on my end. Uh, and it, I put in the word Zoom and, and this pops up. So that's what you, so uh, who knows? <laughs> this is a problem with going uh, to third party tools. So if you do use a QR code, uh, enter Zoom, but you don't need the QR code. You can just go to that link. Thank you, Robbie. Yes, Scott, too much to remember all at once. I believe that. That's why I told you just to take your biggest takeaways uh, as a participant or a host. I know Scott hosts uh, a, a lot of events himself, and so um, he'll 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 be thinking about which ones he want to try out at the next few events that they have. Yeah. So, anybody else who would like to share their uh, favorite takeaways from today's event? Doreen wanted to say, "I love the fireside chat with pre-planned questions." Yeah, I love that too. And you know how this could also help um, your business. That would also be great if you could share that one too. I like the waterfall common thing. It's a really neat idea. Yeah, so happens. waterfall debrief could be um, if you're doing a check-in at the beginning of a call, if you're getting a debrief after a breakout room, you just sort of say, everyone, without hitting enter, draft your response to this question in chat. And then you give them a few seconds to do so and then count down. So that's awesome. So uh, I believe Jen, I think Jen, Jen wants to join us, but she, here, Jen, I see you raising your hand. There we go. Oh my God, she has it. Jen, how wonderful. Jen, I'm going to sign it from here. <laughs> um, I, I took one of your programs. I want to say it was NSA Oregon. Would that be right? Yes, I did do one. And uh, you'd been on for about 15 minutes. And as you were speaking, I went to Amazon and ordered it. I just found you very practical. And I'm a full-time career speaker. And I was on another Zoom to London a few minutes ago. And I said, I'm going to hear a speaker teach me about Zoom because Zoom's videos are written by left brain techies, which drives me crazy. Yeah. Are we still recording? Because I really want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll give you an example, Jen. Uh, I went to a training where they were revealing uh, new features that were coming up on Zoom, which was really awesome. I got a personal invitation to see what was going on. I loved it. Um, but there was a question with um, uh, how do we see how do we see people like when you've got, you know, 20 people in a room, how do we see people's reactions? was the question for the participant. And the trainer said, oh, um, the reactions like so, show up in the corner and you just you just see them. He, and of course the participant was talking about like their their facial, their body, their, like, are they engaging? Like, how do we how do we know whether people are paying attention to us? But he was like, oh, there's this feature, it's click right here, <laughs> which is like 
that was an answer, but it may not be the answer that that person was looking for. Um, so I feel like a translator sometimes. Thank you, Jen, so much for sharing that. And uh, yeah, go ahead and dig in. Oh, by the way, I have uh, Jen and uh, anyone else who cares to do this. I have 241 reviews currently. I would love my birthday was last Saturday. I would love to get to 250. If you're on the call and you have the book and you have not yet written a review. Thank you. Happy to do it. Hey, one more. One more. Fantastic. Seeing lots of familiar faces from my own world of people who've been coming to lots of my events. Some of them asked me about coming to this one and I said, you've seen it. They're like, nope, I need to see it again. Doreen, Doreen, I think you're one of those people. <laughs> I've seen it. I need to see it again. You always get another idea, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, I'm seeing lots of comments in here. Is there anything you wanted to share about what's happening in chat? Sure. So we have um, Scott here saying good advice on handling panelists. We value doing good, uh, good pre prep with all speakers. So there's a very good sense of structure and flow. Arlene Henry says, it's definitely worth a replay. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with all the information that we just learned. We want to replay it all over again. Jacqueline, I am so thankful I was referred. Yeah. And Steve says, every slide had a takeaway. Excellent job giving good advice at every moment. And that's the downfall of trying to give people lots of good advice is that it can feel like drinking from a fire hose. So for instance, advanced polling, you just know it exists now. You don't need to know how to turn it on. You just need to know that it's an option because once you know a thing exists, you can go find out how to do it. I want to talk to you about why to do something, right? The purpose behind doing it. So we didn't talk about music at all today. I just want to mention to you, I personally, the way I open my rooms is a little different than folks do it here. And again, no shade. Everyone has a slightly different thing. I like to use music because I don't want people to engage in a con sidebar conversation in those first few minutes before everyone else joins. Because as a, a participant, I have come in in the middle of those and thought, am I late? Like I'm, I'm a minute early, but it seems like something's already happening. I'm like, I'm, I'm discombobulated. I've also, as the host or presenter, had a hard time grabbing everyone's attention back if they, like, particularly if someone's like, oh my God, Mary, and then, you know, <laughs> The host and Mary start to have a whole conversation together. So I like to have a curtains closed moment and then a curtains open moment. So I open my room two minutes before and not earlier. And I will start a minute to two minutes after the hour. And in those three or four minutes, I will play music. I will wait. That's the other thing. I can't tell you how many times I'm not greeted. Everyone's like this because they're checking their, their desk to make sure everything's set up. They're not looking at the camera to greet you. So it's silent, but they're not looking. So, so wave, have a, if you have to make a designated reader, <laughs> it was like, hello, and drop hellos and welcomes in chat. And so I like to give instructions like update your name to say where you're calling in from or add your pronouns or whatever I might say, and uh, particularly if we're using breakout rooms. And um, in, meanwhile, enjoy the music, which tells them they should hear it. But if they don't hear the music, they know something's wrong with their audio. And if they can't see me waving, they know something's wrong. So like we give them out. And if I'm working with my event clients, I have countdown clocks. It's a little more formal um, to really make it a curtain close. So different ideas uh, for different things. But again, I didn't tell you at all in that last few minutes how to play music. That is a thing that I can show you through a video or you can find out online but I want to talk to you about why I play it. I play a few seconds of music when people come back from breakout rooms, just a little burst of energy. We have a little fun, we laugh and then we move on, right? It's little things that I'm trying to tell you why people like my events, right? I'm trying, I'm trying to give you the secret sauce, <laughs> the wizardry behind the curtain. And it's, it's not magic. It's planning, preparation and follow through. It's, it's tried and tested and failing and trying again so many times until you find good formulas. So um, thank you for the feedback. Um, I see Doreen says, have you ever used polls uh, such as trivia about the topic as an opening or gathering activity? Um, I did have a facilitator, a trainer come and do one that was, um, she took up close pictures of everyday objects and put that on the screen and asked us what it was. And we got in, we actually did it as a, um, a trivia game. We all got access to the same 
uh, information on like a PDF or something, or maybe even was like Google doc of some kind. And then she had a form and people went to separate breakout rooms and teams and had to give their answers. So they come up with a funny team name. And uh, so then that was actually a fun thing. We did that. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes doing that is better when people already know each other, Doreen, because they're not going to spend time doing that. Like, what do you do? Like, they don't need that kind of get to know you. They just need something that like breaks the, the everyday work connection into like a more familiar one. And that was actually really fun. And, and I couldn't answer like what some of these things were. I mean, uh, one, I just remember one being a toothbrush, but it was so up close. I had no idea what it was. Like the bristles did not look like anything I would have recognized as a bristle. So that's a really fun one um, to get people in and out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's less a poll. Um, but yeah, I, I could see, uh, I, I actually, for my in-person events, I often talk about using um, four stacks of index cards of different colors to hold up as like a who's in the room and like get a range of answers. So I could see, again, the same idea of using a poll to get to those same results. I actually am kind of low tech in person. I, I don't want to hand people the permission to use their phone until the very end to put their calendar stuff in. And so I try to use like index cards. I'm like, if a kindergartner would follow the directions, then we're good. <laughs> um, I'm seeing some other questions in here um, about sharing music. Um, cool. Yeah. So Marty, um, you know, the thing you should know is once you figure out how to play music from Zoom, uh, it will play everything that's on your computer. Uh, every ding, calendar, calendar notifications, Slack notifications, email notifications, which you should turn off anyway. They're just distracting you and slowing down your productivity. Um, but that's something you have to be concerned about. And then other thing to think about is, are you using a source that has um, ads, commercials? So um, if you're going to use, for instance, uh, YouTube, you want to go to the YouTube before you're playing it, play that YouTube ad and then have it queued up to play. Um, I am also not an IP lawyer, so I will not speak to the IP, but I will caution you that you should not stream music to like Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, you will have that content taken down pretty quickly probably. Um, but you know, if it's an invite only event in certain invitations in certain circles, you can play kind of anything, but there is also royalty free music available on every platform, Spotify, Amazon music, you name it. Uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Apple Music, whatever they're calling it these days, you can find um, uh, royalty-free music to play as well. That's sort of upbeat or or mellow, depending on what you're looking for. That's a really great tip. I love that about the, the music uh, tip that you shared, you know? I love the purpose that you, you've mentioned. You don't need to teach us how, but you just need to teach us the purpose. I like that about the music. I think it uh, it really gives that um, that curtain call that you've mentioned. I think it's very valuable for especially for me that I handle Zoom events like this. Mm -hmm. So this has been really thrilling for me. Yeah, and I love this comment from Jen. Your speaking approach is one where you are having a conversation with us versus talking at us. A wonderful approach, which is very welcome. I totally agree, Jen. Uh, thank you very much for that compliment. And I just took a screenshot. I don't know where I'll use it, Jen, but thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, since we're still hanging out here, I will now walk you through. This was my number one most requested question uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. How do you play music now that I've already told you why? Um, so uh, first, I have to make sure you have the ability to share your screen, which you do, which, by the way, uh, all, generally, I would say to have this turned off. So it's a security hazard. I've got a videos about things we could have turned off. Um, but uh, there's a share button on the bottom that's big and green and square. Click that square share button. And at the top, it says advanced. And then on the next screen, it says computer audio. So let's not click it just so everyone else can see it. Um, but you hit share screen at the bottom. At the top, there's a pop-up window, advanced, and then you'll see computer audio. That's how you share music without sharing your slides. Now, if you're sharing slides or a video, you want to go back to the basic window at the top instead of a dance. And on the bottom left corner, it says share sound with a check mark and optimize for video clip is another check mark. The share sound box is the one you have to check in order to share sound off of a video or if you have music embedded on um, a slide or something like that. Um, or if I want to share my screen for a countdown clock and play music 
from my computer, I would do it that way. I would share my slide with the countdown clock and I would hit share sound in the top, in the bottom uh, left corner. And then I'd be able to um, play music from another source. So um, I think I kind of caught someone doing that. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Diane. Appreciate it. And Nicole, I think I, what I want to reinforce what Nicole said. If you, I, I like to play music for my client events um, at the very beginning. And we just, as a rule, cut that off. And so what we do is like, I usually play a little music and then I come on and do a little Zoom orientation just so that I'm explaining like, here's what we're going to be doing kind of thing. And then I pass the mic to the person doing the welcome. The video recording we cut so that it starts with the person doing the welcome. There's no reason people watching the video need to hear me talk about how to use Zoom correctly. Like, here, here's how we're going to collect your questions. It's like they're watching. Um, thanks, thanks, friends. So I know folks have to start heading out. Um, if you scroll up, you'll see all the things that I shared earlier. Please do pop into my world. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I I constantly post information there. And I do have the 5% Advantage program coming up. There are three levels. There is an audit level. There's a personalized feedback level. And there's a certification level. Um, audit means you get to get all the content that's been pre-recorded and come to three live sessions to learn. And the personalized feedback means that week two, you actually record a 20-minute session of you doing some of these things. And I review it for you. And we, go, we listen as a group to the feedback on the third week. And then the certification... Uh, includes all of that plus i'm maybe for an hour to help you design your certification program which is 30 minutes long and then i review and if you meet the criteria which is there's 12 criteria you have to meet at least 10 you'll get a badge and it's linked to credentials.net which means you can put on your website you can put on your linkedin all that good stuff um if it's if, if credentialing will help your business in some way like i know doreen you're doing a lot of this if that'll help you get more clients in, in spaces that don't already know how talented you are um that's why some people have done it um, I, a lot of people have become Zoom producers off of it or they're presenters and they want to just be able to show that they, 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 they know more than the basics when it comes to Zoom and how to work with a host or how to work with a chat moderator. Um, so saving chat, you go down to the bottom of your chat window. Great question. Uh, and uh, you'll see three dots next to the smiley face. Click on the three dots on the bottom of your chat window and you'll see save option as one of the options. Occasionally, that is not there. Uh, it's most likely uh, it's going to be for a, an organization like a like a hospital or a medical organization. HIPAA laws do not allow that to have happen if it's a externally facing event. Um, there's a way to actually turn that off for internal events, but it's a little complicated. Um, and people can individually turn that off, but by default, it is available, which is nice. So once again, thank you so much, Robbie, yeah, for welcome. teaching us everything, almost everything we have to we need to learn from Zoom. And I, I also just wanted to thank everyone for showing up at today's event. And our next event is going to be on September 26, 2023. And we are going to have Mitchell Levy talking about how to unleash success with clarity. And to sign up for that, you can go to this URL that I will put in the chat box. Go once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, if you want to contact Robbie, you can just go to the link uh, that he just um, uh, sent in the chat box. And uh, we also look forward to see you all again in the next event. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank save you. Save chat. Save chat. Save chat. Don't forget save to chat. save chat. Save chat. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.